first of all, one of the issues in Turkey that are discussed is the fact that currently we have a government in Turkey which has been ruling the country since 2002. As explained in the beginning, there are some events that took place at the end of May uh, and uh, the first week of June. It started in Taksim Square, which is a very important place in Istanbul, and then it spread to other cities. And I will try to explain what are the main reasons behind such comprehensive protests that took place in and around Turkey. And when there was a change in the political mood in Turkey in 2002, this is the time that the first Justice and Development Party came to power, Erdogan's AK Party. There were some suspicions among the Turkish elite, among the Turkish military, among the Turkish uh, media, that this government, because of its conservative values and conservative ideology, will Islamicize the country, will turn its back to the European Union principles and values. But the party took a different stance, took a different direction. Instead of turning its back to the European Union, what it did was to have full negotiations with the European Union. And especially in the United States of America and in the European Union, a debate started whether Turkey was exchanging, changing its axis, whether Turkey was becoming involved in the Middle Eastern affairs much more. It is true that Turkey started to become part of the Middle East because geographically speaking, historically speaking, and culturally speaking, Turkey is located in the Middle East, but during the formative period of the uh, earlier Republican Turkey, Turkey was an introverted country rather than expanding uh, its horizons, rather than looking at uh, the neighboring countries, for example. Turkey decided to look at its own affairs. And when we look at even the domestic affairs, we see that in many areas, Turkey failed to open up new avenues for people. Uh, the Republican ideology was based on homogenization of the society. Therefore, any ideologies, any identities which are not part of the mainstream Turkishness or Turkish ideology, Turkish nationalism was not recognized. And the Kurdish language was not allowed, for example. It was this government in 2009, Erdogan government, recognized this issue politically for the first time uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, the Prime Minister of Turkey, went to Diyarbakir, which is a Kurdish city in Turkey, and recognized that until then the state denied Kurdish reality in Turkey. I think this is an important development as far as the power balances in Turkey is changing. We had at the center all these security elite, we had all these modernist and secularist elite, but things started to change in Turkey. And of course, becoming member of the European Union, that is an important step, and also Turkey's uh, membership with the global world, economic development, the level of education in Turkey is yet uh, are also important areas that contributed to the development of uh, uh, democratization in Turkey. At the end of May, a number of people occupied a small park in Taksim Square because the future of the Taksim Square or the, this Gezi Park was not known. The government was not able to explain the development plans. And it was thought by the people that the, uh, the whole park would be destroyed. Therefore, they went there and they started the campaign of protecting the trees and protecting the environment. It started with this kind of environmentally friendly uh, protests within the Gezi Park itself. It's a very small park in Taksim Square. Secondly, these young people, most of them were young people, and they were effectively using the social media. They were saying that the government should listen to us as well. Because at the same time, few other things took place. One is naming a bridge in Turkey, a third bridge on the Bosphorus. It was named after Yavuz Sultan Selim as one of the Ottoman sultans, which was accused of having uh, discriminatory policies toward the Alevi minority at the time. Secondly, at this time of the year, the government introduced a law which um, not prohibits the sale of alcohol, but um, put some pro um, 
restrictions on the sale of alcohol. And this was seen and presented by many people as intervention in the personal lifestyles of people. However, when you look at these statements of uh, you know, different people, some people argue that, yes, this is an intervention of the government because the gov government has a hidden Islamic agenda. Some people argue that. One should make a separation and differentiation between people who started at the Gezi Park itself. I'm talking about the young people. I'm talking about uh, well-educated people with a concern of environmental protection. But also, one should look at those people who occupied Taksim Square and started some violent attempts to, uh, maybe overthrowing the government is a strong word, but when you look at the pattern, because it started in Taksim Square, the violence was part of it, and it's, it's separate to all other cities. Uh, I think then uh, people looked at different, because the uh, legitimate protest was hijacked by other organizations with some violent uh, methods. <laughs> Turkey, as you all know, and also uh, mentioned by uh, Professor Küçükcan, has lived through major changes uh, at home during the past 10 years, uh, which made it a, a center of attraction for both global and uh, regional observers. While global observers uh, became genuinely interested in understanding the dynamics of uh, this Turkish change, many regional observers uh, came to consider Turkey's performance as a, as a reference point. Turkey, meanwhile, has considered itself as one of the forerunners uh, of an extensive regional systemic change and availed itself for experience sharing with many, uh, many other Middle Eastern countries. And when the so-called Arab Spring started uh, in the region in the Middle East, Turkey as a country which benefited greatly from the reforms in economy, in, in, uh, in politics, uh, in foreign policy also, uh, positioned itself at the side of the reformist side of the uh, you know, revolutions or, or the conflict in the region. Uh, it positioned itself as an anti-status quo uh, oppositional movement. And this, I would say, unhesitant siding of Turkey with the oppositional movements in the region, in the Middle East, by Turkey, brought the country, or Turkey, once again to the fore of uh, attention uh, in many foreign policy circles. Uh, Turkey is a country which benefited greatly from an extensive reform program ranging from domestic politics to economy and foreign policy. And uh, needless to say that Turkey is not the only country uh, in the world that has done uh, an extensive reform program and uh, that has done well politically and economically in a short period of time. But there are some factors that made Turkey uh, a relevant actor uh, or a relevant role model for uh, many countries in the Middle East. <laughs> And another reason which makes Turkey very relevant in the Middle Eastern context is the fact that uh, you know, there are many similarities between the demands of the Middle Eastern people or the Arab Spring uh, you know, demands and the demands that were voiced by Turkey or the Turkish people uh, you know, up until, let's say, uh, up until now. Bread and dignity were the two main themes of the Arab Spring. Bread was signifying uh, the economic demands of the people, which were also voiced by the Turks themselves. And dignity, that means uh, freedom to speech, uh, ability to you know, uh, choose uh, one's own leaders without you know, corruption uh, or uh, without having uh, you know, uh, the censorship or uh, with the dignity of the ballot box. I, and I think this is uh, one important, uh, you know, uh, point here that I would like to signify, the dignity of the ballot box or respect uh, for the ballot box or respect for the choice of the people. This similarity in problems and demands of change between Turkey and the Arab world made the Turkish experience 
uh, a point of reference. I would like to argue here that, you know, uh, you know stemming from the uh, similarities in the demands uh, and the problems in Turkey of the pre uh, or the pre 2000 Turkey and the Arab world at the moment, I would like to argue that the transformation uh, that Turkey went through during the last decade is one of the predecessors of the Arab Spring. Uh, and knowing that Turkey can share its experience with the regional people or with the Middle Eastern people, Turkey tried to create an atmosphere that enables uh, economic, social, cultural, and political interaction between uh, the people of Turkey and the people of the region. The Turkish foreign policy makers believe that the Arab Spring would cure some of the abnormalities in the Middle East, remaining from the First World War years, which left the region with uh, imposed borders and with clashing nationalistic uh, rhetoric. And then came the Cold War years. Cold War years added like imposed alliances, a Palestinian state to be established, and the reality of the Israeli occupation. Furthermore, the Camp David Accords established a regional system which prioritized Israel's security over everything else and prepares political downfall of Egypt, which is traditionally a major power broker in the Middle East. The new Middle East then expected to be shaped by the Arab Spring or the Arab Street or the will of the people would command more legitimacy and people's will and you know, could be more efficient than the status quo regimes to cure these abnormalities and persistent problems. <laughs>
that will solve all the problems. We will watch it and it will be solved on its own. I think there is no magic solution to the Syrian crisis and I think international community should recognize the concerns of Turkey as well, not only the other neighbor, neighboring countries. So Turkey is, we have 900 kilometers border with Syria today. Thank you.